Cast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, traders. Okay, welcome to the DXFeed Bookmap webinar. Can everyone hear me and see my screen? If you could just uh, give me a, a yes in the questions there. All right, yeah, it looks like, uh, looks like I'm broadcasting just fine here. Screen and, uh, and audio, okay. All right, well, let's get started. Okay, so uh, what we're going to go through, uh, well, uh, this new DX feed uh, for Bookmap and Trading U.S. Equities, uh, the di a data visualization that you're getting, and I'm going to show you how to get a competitive advantage uh, today, right now, uh, using uh, DX feed Bookmap. So let's go through it here. Uh, risk disclaimer, trading equities futures uh, evolve, involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Bruce Pringle, a uh, trader of 10 years in a variety of markets, uh, order flow specialist at Bookmap, the lead at the Bookmap trading education uh, and expertise in order flow and uh, market microstructure. Okay, for more information, you can go to bookmap.com uh, as well as our uh, Twitter handle at bookmap underscore pro. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube page. Uh, just look up bookmap uh, and then email us at support at bookmap.com. Okay, so pretty lofty uh, big statement here. Uh, trading U.S. equities and getting a competitive advantage now. How am I going to show this? Uh, what are, what are you, um, how am I going to promise this? Uh, you're here to trade equities, uh, get more information. Uh, and to make money, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at uh, the depth of market and we're gonna be able to see all the market liquidity and all the players in the market with full depth of market. Okay, that's one of the advantages. Uh, we're gonna start to read the order flow in the, mark, in the micro and macro structures. Uh, we're gonna read the algorithmic behavior and larger players. Uh, and then I'm going to show you some examples of some bookmap traders and how they use uh, bookmap. Some pretty interesting examples. Okay, so we're going to look at a chart like this. This is Apple. Uh, and um, let's see, this is uh, uh, back on March, March 22nd. Some interesting things in this chart. And for those of you who are new here, uh, I just want to welcome you. And, and looking at this chart might look like something very foreign to you. But... At the end of this webinar, I'm going to show you the, di the different uh, distinctions in the order flow, and you're going to understand the advantages you're going to get in the data visualization using Bookmap. Uh, and, um, uh, and we'll revisit this chart at the end of the, uh, of the webinar and start to uh, revisit uh, and review uh, some of the um, uh, components that we went through uh, for the webinar. Okay, so an overview of DX Feed Bookmap. What is it? Okay, well, it's a trading platform. Uh, it's a bookmap trading platform with DX feed, and you can trade uh, using DX feed uh, directly into interactive brokers. Okay, bookmap is a unique visualization software. Okay, and uh, the DX feed allows bookmap to connect to all U.S. equities. Okay, you also have the ability to uh, connect to futures markets uh, and digital currencies as well. All right, we're going to start off with a poll and just uh, uh, pose the question, what is order flow? Okay, so uh, I'm going to launch this here so you guys take a look. Okay, and uh, if you can give me uh, your answer here, it's a very simple poll. So just uh, what is order flow? Okay, is it the traded volume? Uh, is it um, uh, resting orders? 
Is it both? Okay, because traditionally what order flow is and what order flow truly is, uh, we have we have a, a different answer. It's kind of updated uh, uh, today. Okay, all right, well, let's, uh, okay, thanks for the answers there. And uh, let's uh, close it. Okay, and I should be able to get back to, okay, so now you can see the slide again and we're back to the presentation, all right. Okay, well, it's both. Uh, that, that's exactly what it is. Uh, you, you know, you're looking at, but traditionally order flow has been just transactions, following the tape, reading the tape, uh, seeing those transactions go through. But what we're gonna look at here is the liquidity, okay? It's not necessarily traded uh, uh, or, or transactions that have occurred. Uh, we're gonna be looking at uh, how uh, the auction, uh, bidders, uh, and uh, those that are sellers, uh, how they affect the order flow or the, the, the amount of orders in the market, okay? So uh, let's move on. Uh, all right, market data. So um, in the order flow that I was just uh, describing, 10% of that data uh, is in um, uh, the traditional charts, like uh, looking at your candlestick uh, patterns uh, or uh, all, of the, all of the charts out there. Uh, uh, no one's showing uh, what's happening outside of the transactions that have occurred. It's all transactions and price, uh, and that's it. So you're looking at uh, all sorts of bar rotations, aggregated periods, uh, executed volume, uh, and then um, uh, on top of that, they um, uh, throw a lot of different indicators, and those are derivatives of price, time, and volume. Okay. Now, truly, that is about 10% or, or maybe even less uh, of the uh, data that's out there. For example, uh, look at a candlestick chart. Okay, it's for whatever date, uh, time period you're looking at, uh, it, let's say a five minute candlestick chart, you're only getting four data points within that five minute period. You're getting open, high, low, and close. Okay, a lot of opacity within that candlestick. You don't know uh, what had occurred in there. Uh, you don't have any clue to the volume, microstructure, uh, the, uh, the amount of volume, exactly where it traded, uh, and then how they're bidding and offering uh, in that area as well. Okay, now in Bookmap, uh, you're looking at 100% of the data. Okay, you're looking at the executed volume. Uh, it's non-aggregated data. Okay, there, there is no aggregation. There is no um, a period of time uh, that is um, uh, like a five-minute candlestick chart or a bar rotation, even a Renko bar. It doesn't matter. There's still aggregated periods of data. Right, and then... Um, uh, we're going to show the full depth of market, okay? So the auction, this, what's happening outside of those transactions, okay? We're going to look at the current and the historical, and a big distinction between those two, current and historical. So the, the pyramid that you see over here on the right, okay? Well, it all starts with the data. That's the, the foundation of uh, understanding uh, and knowledge, which uh, finally goes to, uh, to wisdom, okay? So we need good data. Uh, and then from that, we can draw information, and then from that is knowledge. Uh, and then we get to that top of that pyramid, and we really understand what's going on with wisdom. Okay, so data makes the difference. Okay, without good data, it's basically garbage in, garbage out. And uh, DX feed book map, okay, it covers all U.S. equities, full depth of market. I'm going to describe that a bit uh, uh, in just a bit, so hold on for that if you don't understand what that term means. Uh, low latencies. Okay, servers around the globe. So very, very quick transactions and a quick amount of data. And uh, with the DX feed book map, you're getting consolidated um, a view uh, a, a, of many choices here. Uh, NASDAQ total view and NASDAQ last sale. Okay, that's uh, what you get with the, with the NASDAQ. And now we're offering EdgeX, which is basically BATS. Okay, you can choose either or or you can choose both of those uh, together as a combination. And I'll get more into the pricing and uh, the offering here uh, at the end of the webinar. Okay, just wanted to uh, upfront uh, mention this here. Now, we're gonna go back and we're gonna revisit a regular dome, okay? And using that regular dome, okay? We're all pretty accustomed to this. Uh, this is a Green Mountain Coffee. Uh, on this side over here, uh, we see the, uh, the bid and we see the depth of market here at these price levels. Uh, these are the the, the um, 
uh, liquidity providers and the amount of liquidity they're providing at these price levels. Over here is on the ask, uh, and we can see all of all of the uh, liquidity providers and uh, uh, where they're offering uh, uh, to to um, uh, sell at, at these areas. Okay. Well, the dome is good. Uh, it, it allows you to uh, to really start to understand orders at specific areas to be able to optimize entries, exits, and your trade management. You can see the larger players. You start to understand where they're willing to deal or not. Uh, this is what the professionals use, uh, starting to understand that depth of market. Okay, now let's compare that dome uh, with bookmap. And we're just going to look at the, the top here, uh, the best bid and offer. Okay, and this is what it looks like here in the dome. Uh, and here's what it looks like over in Bookmap. Okay, so uh, this vertical white line is the separation between historical to the left, uh, and then to the right here, we're looking at uh, everything that is live. Okay, and then in this view here, what we're looking at here, this is your best offer and your best bid right here graphically, and then here it is numerically. Now I'm, I'm looking at Apple here, and we're comparing that to Green Mountain Coffee. So you know, just uh, this is an older image. Okay, but uh, that's what it looks like in Bookmap. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Here is your depth here uh, on the bid in the dome, and then this is what the depth is here uh, in Bookmap. Okay, and then here's your depth on the uh, on the offer. Okay, these are traders lined up here providing liquidity in Apple. Uh, they want to be sellers up in these areas, uh, and here it is in the uh, in the dome. Okay, so now you have a a, a, a comparison or reference guide here to what you're looking at in Bookmap and how it translates to a dome. Okay. Now the disadvantages of that dome, well, we have no historical view. Okay. When these numbers uh, change here, uh, there's no history, uh, there's no record of it. Uh, so you're gonna have to start to memorize uh, these areas. That's a big disadvantage, okay? Because uh, uh, how long were these traders here? How much liquidity did they provide? How much did they pull? Uh, uh, did they pull and add down at lower areas? Can you see that? Uh, what about on the, on the bid? Did they switch from uh, uh, offer to the bid? Uh, all of these questions would be almost impossible to, uh, to answer uh, unless you have some sort of uh, a memory that uh, can, can really um, uh, answer those questions. Uh, it's going to be um, uh, extremely hard, though, when you start to look at higher time frames. Okay, what about an hour ago? Were they at that price level there before? Did they pull or did they add? Or did they move it to another area? Okay, so uh, that's that's some of the disadvantages with the dome. Inability to read the algos is a big part of that as well. Okay, and I just covered the, the tediousness of reading that dome. Okay, and now putting that in context of microstructure, okay, of understanding uh, just nuances in price movement and uh, the relationship between that and liquidity. Okay, and transactions. Uh, well, what about a macro view? Okay, let's just move away from that and look at several hours, maybe a whole day of, of data. Okay, it's gonna be really difficult to do in a dome. Okay, and that's some of the advantages you get with Bookmap. Quick graphical representation. Okay, we get that consolidated view or feed. Uh, so everyone is at the same price level. Uh, and then you, you start to, um, you're able to start to understand the microstructural content Okay, uh, here's our a recent, this is just recent historical uh, view here. Well, you we can see sellers are in this market here. They're, they're, they're pushing it down. They're hitting the bid into lower uh, areas of liquidity. And the highest liquidity is down, down here at the moment, down at um, uh, 186.24. Okay, well, where are they on the, uh, on the offer? Well, they're up here. Okay. We can start to answer some of these questions down here. They traded into high liquidity that's down here as well. Okay, and traded through that area. Okay, uh, let's move on to uh, some of the elements here in the book map chart. So start to define uh, some of these elements that uh, I just went through. This is the same slide, uh, just uh, looking at a little bit bigger view. Uh, and um, okay, so uh, the dome and book map, graphical representation, uh, liquidity here, uh, 3,600 contracts and, or shares and then 2,200 shares here. Well, pre pretty high in the book, okay? Well, look up here, 186.50 at the at the round figure. Uh, almost always you see, uh, especially in equities, uh, higher liquidity at these areas. Uh, and here they are, okay? 31,787 contracts up here, okay? It's the darkest area, dark red. The scale of liquidity is up here, 
from red to orange to yellow to white to blue and then to black. Right? So uh, we understand immediately by looking at the, uh, the heat map. Here they are. These are the larger players. They're up here. Okay, And uh, we take the data in the current market here, and then to the left of this vertical white line, it's all recorded and transposed onto the chart. Okay? And that's the heat map. And that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at the evolution of the uh, order book, okay, plotted onto the chart historically. So you can start to read some of this liquidity. Look how they started to pop into the book from nothing or very low liquidity in this area here uh, on up into higher and higher liquidity. And price came down and traded into it here. Transactions uh, took place in that high liquidity and they traded through that area. Okay. Now, um, uh, okay, so uh, best bid and offer down here. Last traded volume is this number here. Here's our price ladder. Okay, and, and again, in Apple, this Apple example. Uh, and then uh, let's go over the transactions, these dots. Okay, that's uh, the third element here on this on this book map chart. Uh, best bid and offer is the first. Historical best bid and offer here. Okay, the uh, heat map uh, that uh, just covered. Now the transactions. Okay, red dot is an aggressive market sell. Okay, that's uh, uh, they hit the market sell button. They took liquidity. They didn't provide liquidity. Uh, and they uh, uh, took it off of the best bid, okay? And that's a red dot. The size of the dot is in relationship to uh, the other uh, uh, dots here that you see, okay? So uh, uh, if it's a big red uh, bubble here, well, you know that there was a lot of selling there, okay? And then uh, same with the green, okay? That's an aggressive market buy that took place on the best offer. Right? And the size of the dot is a relationship uh, uh, to the other um, uh, uh, volume that traded here that you can see. All right, so that's a, a really quick uh, overview of the basics. Uh, we'll continue on uh, and start to read some of the microstructure because we have it right here in front of us. High liquidity on the offer. Uh, buyers aren't willing to take them on. We start to find sellers hit the bid into lower areas. We find liquidity here that pops into the book. Uh, they start to lower the offer, as you can see in these areas here. Uh, and then, uh, well, we kind of go back and forth for a bit, but the sellers take these guys on, okay? They want to buy here. Well, uh, they, they decide to, uh, to trade into them. So they hit, they hit into that high liquidity, trade through it, okay? Uh, don't have many transactions that happen down here, so we start to rotate back up, okay? There's going to be a little point of control in this area here. We don't find buyers that step in again up in these areas here, and we rotate again down lower. And we know here from the clusters of the selling and another cluster down here, we're looking for follow through to the downside. And these, I know I'm going through this very quickly. We do this every day in the advanced order flow webinars. Uh, once you subscribe, you'll have access to those. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, that's uh, some of the microstructure, but uh, that's just kind of current um, and, or recent historical market. Let's get into the um, uh, uh, the macro view, uh, just larger uh, uh, zoom out and look at the entire day here uh, in Apple. Now this is from that same uh, slide. We were just looking around that 186.20 uh, level or 18, 15, somewhere down here. Well, here's what the day looks like, okay? You can't do this on your dome. Uh, you're not gonna be able to see it, okay? Look at all the high liquidity up in this area here. This was yesterday, okay? And we traded up into these areas yesterday uh, and broke out to the upside. A lot of sellers were up here. Okay. And uh, we need to see if they stay in that book or sell, uh, absorb uh, the uh, buying pressure, or if they start to pull and add to higher levels. Okay. Answer a lot of those questions by looking just at the liquidity uh, and transactions. All right, again, macro view here. Uh, and this is a reversal. Okay. Well, where is the high liquidity? Well, it stands right out there uh, at 102. You're going to notice uh, in all of these examples in, in the U.S. equities, uh, they're at the big figures. Okay, 102, here they are. We're looking at uh, Disney in this example. And where are they on the on the bid? They're down here at 101. Well, look, we trade right into them, uh, and we trade through them uh, for a bit. Okay, well, these guys down here, they, they, um, uh, they are long now. These larger players providing that high liquidity, they're long. Sellers come down and it basically doesn't trade uh, much through it, uh, down uh, maybe about 20 cents or so. It starts to rotate back up and these buyers, they step right back in at the same price level. 
sellers take them on again and it looks like a partially uh, a trade into that some of that uh, this is absorption at this point okay because we get the bounce uh, we trade through by um, a few cents maybe five five or ten cents or something uh, but uh, start to rotate back up okay we start to find buyers instead of sellers the, the sellers have all been absorbed at, up at this point here okay now we're starting to rotate back up and we're finding buyers uh, starting to jump in Okay. The swing up here is what we're looking at. We're looking for buyers to step in. We're looking, starting to look at maybe maybe where targets would be. Uh, well, where is the higher liquidity uh, up in these areas up here? Okay, where is that? 101.50, and uh, and a little bit higher here as well, 101.60. As we start to rotate back up, look at the buying start to um, uh, uh, really um, uh, pick up here. Okay, and especially up in this area above the swing up here. Uh, note uh, all the buyers starting to step in here. Okay, this is a shift in the order flow. Right, we can uh, we can very clearly see it. We know where the buyers are, uh, and they're back in here as well, uh, back here at 101. Uh, where's the target? The target is 102. Okay, it really steps up here. And what does this look like here? And this is all due to the order flow. Well, we have a shoulder, a head, and a shoulder. And this is a reversal pattern that you're looking at, but we're analyzing it here very objectively in terms of the order flow. Okay. And that order flow shift, we're starting to see it here, and it really takes place over here. Okay. Anyway, uh, we have many examples here to go through, so let's continue on. Uh, let's compare uh, uh, volume profile uh, with liquidity. Okay, we're looking at uh, Tesla and uh, targeting uh, a higher liquidity up here uh, in some of these areas. Here's a breakout. Look at the buying here that, that lifts the offer up into. They actually pull some of that liquidity here, but it trades up into this area up here and starts to transact. Okay, nice cluster of buying. We can also see it in our volume column over here. Okay. Now, if you're trading volume profile, you'd be looking for a pullback to where? Here's a, here's a big cluster of activity that just took place, and here is the previous activity here. Well, you'd be looking for your low volume node pull pullback. Oops, sorry. You'd be looking for a pullback into this area here. And maybe around one, uh, 302.50. Well, that's not the story here, though. Uh, you, you know, you, you, would, uh, you would be missing the move here. And why is that? Well, because they flipped from the uh, offer side here uh, at uh, 303 uh, uh, to the bid side here at 303.05, looks like. So actually, the story is here. Okay. This is where they want to buy. High liquidity is here. Right. So you'd be targeting uh, the higher liquidity up here at um, uh, 30 uh, it looks like, or three or four twenty-five. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. Well, here's that same area right here where they were. We did not get that pullback into the low volume node. Instead, uh, we got kind of a, a skew in that book on the on the bid side, uh, and we came up and hit the target. Okay. Now, curiously enough, uh, there's some more things going on here. Uh, very um, uh, short-term high liquidity in some of these areas, and I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you this slide later okay, in, in about uh, uh, five or ten minutes. Uh, and uh, we start to notice, though, that they're pulling. They pull here, they pull here, and it uh, looks like they actually got transacted here. Okay. And we do finally dip down into that low-volume node. But the story was here at this point. Right, and the buyers stepped in again and, and, and hit the target. All right, so we're starting to understand context uh, of the liquidity, uh, support and resistance, and trend, and putting all these pieces together. Okay, in this example, we're looking at Facebook, and uh, we're looking at the U.S. Open right here, okay, uh, 9:30, and uh, look at all the transactions that take place, and look at them layer in. Okay. You already know the targets uh, or, or uh, areas of uh, resistance uh, in advance here because we have full depth of market. All of these areas are live. Okay, That's the DX feed um, uh, full depth of market that I mentioned earlier. All right. Well, we took on the, the buyers took on these traders here at, at 180, the figure. Uh, we trade through it, and look how they start to flip to the other side here at 180. Okay. From offer to bid. Targeting up, up here uh, at one, 181, uh, note 181 liquidity, 182 liquidity, 183 liquidity, larger players providing liquidity at those areas. 180 is well down here. 
Okay. Well, this is a trending market. We start to trend. We break the, the high here. Nice clusters of buying. Transactions lifting the offer. Continues to lift the offer. And we're starting to note areas of uh, uh, really uh, quite quite pretty areas here of um, liquidity at uh, at these figures. And they're flipping Okay, from uh, uh, offer to bid, from offer to bid. And then from offer, and we we don't get there. But uh, the target was here at, at 83, uh, and we did reach that. All right, so we're starting to understand the con the context uh, of the uh, 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 transactions versus the the auction, uh, where the liquidity is, uh, and this kind of um, uh, a relationship between the two. Well, here's an example of not trending through uh, that those areas in Facebook. Okay, this is absorption. Okay, well, it's uh, five, uh, 52,000 shares here, uh, 183 the figure. Well, we trade up into it and massive transactions take place. Here's what traded. Okay, out of the 52,000 shares up here, uh, it absorbed all of the buying activity. There were no buyers after they came up and traded into this area. It's almost almost completely filled here. Uh, 50, about 50,900, uh, let's say. Okay. And uh, after you see that, well, wh where do they go? Well, we're looking for them to come down and, and test higher liquidity that's going to be down here uh, on the bid. We need to find buyers. Uh, and that's exactly where price uh, slipped down to. And actually looking uh, for this area down here also uh, because uh, of the figure here at 182.50, uh, probably better better area than, than, uh, than 60. Okay. Uh, another uh, example today in Apple, uh, this was earlier, we actually traded through this area, but uh, massive uh, area here of uh, 327,000 shares in Apple. Okay, at where? 190, okay, completely absorbed. Okay, uh, let's see, the, uh, the amount of transactions up here, uh, they didn't even, uh, they, they kind of just scratched the surface here. Uh, it looks like 112,000, uh, so about a third of them were, were uh, uh, transacted, completely absorbed, have to go lower to find buyers. We did find more buyers later in the day, uh, but uh, uh, we came back down and traded to where they started to initiate their buying down in this area here. Okay, So starting to understand, again, those transactions and the initiation of buying and starting to understand these areas of very, very high liquidity and um, uh, the absorption uh, in some of those areas. All right. Uh, let's see here. Okay, let's let's talk about some uh, the opposite of absorption. Let's start talk about uh, exhaustion and look at the liquidity and transactions. Okay, well in this uh, uh, market here uh, in Amazon, we're trending to the upside. Okay, hitting these areas of high liquidity and getting a pause. Okay, uh, absorption here, but the you know they get a they um, find buyers again uh, and and uh, start to uh, lift the offer up into higher areas and uh, trade through some of these areas up into higher liquidity. But look on the other side, though, in the trend. Okay. A lot of buyers, but where are the sellers, especially on these higher lows uh, in these areas here? It's completely exhausting out. There's, no, there's very little liquidity in these areas. We don't see a, a thick band of liquidity uh, in some of these areas at all. It's, it's pretty dark on this side. Okay. Well, no one's willing to, to buy at some of these higher areas here. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, the sellers, it, it basically just exhausts out. There's no interest. So what happens? Well, we rotate back up into areas where it can trade, where transactions were taking place before, and we're looking for price discovery up into uh, higher areas where the liquidity is. And that's exactly where the price uh, or traders uh, move the price to, up, up into those areas of higher liquidity. Okay. So starting to understand exhaustion uh, in these areas as well and looking at the majority of these transactions and where they're taking place and how we can, if we exhaust out down here and we can't find any trading activity, the trading activity is going to revert back to the mean, back to where it can trade. Uh, and it would be up in these areas here. And that's how you get some of the price discovery. You still find more buyers and price discovery to, to reach these targets of high liquidity. And that's that rea um, relationship in context that I was talking about. Okay, now let's talk about uh, some of the, a uh, little bit more about uh, maybe some microstructure and some algorithmic activity. 
Okay, so we're looking at Amazon here and uh, looking at Ignition Algo that pushes price through 1600. Okay, pretty important area in Amazon. Uh, you see this dark area in between here is the spread. I mean, we're looking at you know pretty pretty high price here, so the spread is uh, is pretty wide. Uh, nonetheless, uh, here's an Ignition Algo, and this is what it looks like, and it's captured here uh, because we record all of these areas of high liquidity. It'd be rather difficult to see this in a um, in a dome. But uh, here's high liquidity here, and it, you've, it's got to be uh, not only an algo or an individual actor, it's, uh, you know, an algo. Because high liquidity down here, it moves up, and the moment it moves up and then pulls, it moves up again and again and again up to uh, this um, uh, 1598.60 area. And then it stays for a bit. Now, what is that? Well, think of an auction, and think about how uh, we have um, uh, in an auction, uh, you have uh, a skew in that in that um, auction. You have more buyers willing to buy very quickly at higher areas. Well, if if they're clamoring to buy, uh, a price must be worth more. We actually do find more buyers in here, and it starts to ignite uh, more buying activity into where higher liquidity up here at 1600. That's the figure. And what happens up here? They pull. They pull before price gets up there. So with the skew in the book and not finding sellers, we're looking to go further uh, on up through and get that ignition and push through 1600 in Amazon, and that's exactly what it does. All right, and this is today's action, actually, and um, uh, we're looking at uh, a JP Morgan Chase. Uh, high liquidity up here, uh, where? Again, one, 114, the figure. Uh, looks like uh, 29,000 shares up here, but look at this here. Okay, very very high liquidity. It looks like uh, well, roughly around uh, uh, 88,000. Uh, well, precisely 88,000 at this at this moment today. Uh, but uh, again, it's got to be an individual actor algo uh, that uh, it gets more aggressive here and starts to front run this high liquidity, and then the moment they uh, uh, decide to pull that liquidity, they're adding it lower. Again here, pulling, adding lower, and then pulling and adding lower again. And uh, we can see the reaction that price is having on that, uh, on this kind of activity. This is uh, just from, from the order book, okay? And the transactions and, and reactions that have that, uh, uh, price has or traders have to that liquidity movement there. All right, one more here. Uh, this is what I was showing you early with Tesla. Uh, where um, uh, we see the book flip from uh, uh, offer to bid uh, instead of getting down to that low volume node. We, f we do get down to it, um, but uh, they pull, okay? Again, no intent to trade, right? So uh, th they're, gonna, they're gonna pull that liquidity, but the job is done. The target has been reached and now they can pull, okay? Starting to just piece together, understand this, this relationship between liquidity and transactions. Now, this is uh, something uh, really nice to see. Uh, this was back on March 22nd, and this was some geopolitical tensions, uh, some news. It was a uh, tariff protection announced by Trump, uh, and um, uh, really interesting stuff here. All right now, this is with Tesla. Okay, We have to understand what Tesla is. Okay, It's uh, obviously a car company, but it's a U.S. car company. All right, And we're talking about tariff protection. Well, look at the stock go up here. Okay, look how they, you know, before, right when that uh, announcement uh, occurred, uh, look, look how you can see the uh, all this liquidity pull here. Okay, well, they don't want the risk, right? So, uh, but who doesn't pull? Well, these guys up here don't pull, okay? Around this uh, 320.10 area, okay, they stay in the book, right? So we're starting to understand a valuation of this uh, company by someone who has, has figured that out, larger players willing to, to provide the risk, uh, this is where they think it's of value uh, to sell. And we're, we're getting this information for free okay? from the order book, from this complete depth of market. Uh, we know where they, um, uh, where they, where they believe uh, uh, it's worth uh, to sell. Okay? Well, the rest of these guys start to pull. Uh, they do start to add in here, but they're pulling as well. 
so uh, you know as price uh, you know starts to, uh, uh, to come up here and look at the uh, the auction here very strong auction right a lot of buying they just start to jump in and it just it just goes uh, uh, basically vertical here and it continues that way right until it gets up into this area here Okay, now I think it, I'm not sure if it went through here uh, a, a bit further, but uh, uh, not much, if any, uh, and uh, and then it starts to uh, I think go back and forth. And anyway, point is though is in this example uh, we have um, uh, geopolitical news, uh, and we can we have transparency in the market at these higher valuations. We understand for free basically uh, what uh, 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 other traders are telling us. Uh, uh, Tesla is worth. Okay. Now, the, what I like so much about this example is here's the same example in Apple, okay, and price goes down. Okay, and we need to answer that question of what kind of what kind of company is Apple, right? And where a trader is willing to uh, to buy Apple at this point? Well, Apple is a U.S. company. Actually, it it, it it's supposedly a uh, or, or technically I, I I think it's an Irish company. Okay. But what about all the components? Okay. Those are made in China. And this, this uh, geopolitical news is about tariff protection from China. And the reaction to it is, is to the downside. Okay. So here's Tesla to the upside. And here's, here's Apple to the downside. Now, but let's look at the way that it came down into these areas here in Apple. And you can see clearly uh, that... Uh, yeah, there's some sellers, no question about it. Uh, we know where it's valued, okay, at 174. Uh, and um, uh, but uh, you know, this the selling is not as strong as that auction that we saw earlier. Look at Tesla here. Look at look at how it just uh, you know very strong, nice auction, uh, just uh, buying hand over fist. Okay, but if we look here at Apple, well, they're not so sure about that. It's kind of uh, it's you know it's it's debatable. Uh, they definitely think that this is going to hurt the company, uh, but uh, uh, they're not so sure about it. And we start to just kind of, we're, we're, we continue to go lower. Once we get through this 175 area, we find where the sellers are. Uh, they're, they're up here at, at 175. Okay. looks like about half a million. Uh, is it half a million? No, I guess 50,000 shares, 54,000 shares up here. Okay. So um, uh, anyway, uh, uh, we come down and just just uh, test in front of that 174 area and start to bounce back up again a bit stronger uh, I mean it's definitely weaker but uh, it's not as uh, uh, and compared to how strong this is this is not as strong we on the weak side okay but we're starting to understand why okay. and it's all here in the chart okay and that valuation all right now I'm going to extrapolate that same understanding evaluation uh, from larger players uh, for the market open okay, and that's that full depth of market so here's here's uh, Amazon okay here's the market open at 930 so all of this is pre-market activity here in Amazon okay and um, uh, where do they hold this liquidity uh, after the after the open well they're still up here uh, at uh, at 1580 okay they're also still here at 1570 and then they're down here at uh, 1545, basically on the on the bid. Okay, and we already knew this, right? And they stayed in here. So here's the cash open, and uh, well, uh, you know, if we are we already see the move to the upside up into 1570, I'd be looking for a move up back up into 1570 and potentially uh, uh, 1580 here, uh, if we can get some some more buying to happen and occur up at this 1570 level. Okay, so let's go forward. Okay, and again, we're getting this valuation for free at the open, just just like we are at the at the news uh, uh, geopolitical news for uh, Amazon and Tesla. Well, uh, here's our uh, here's our 9:30 open. We definitely move and trade above uh, the uh, 15.70 area, uh, and uh, kind of go sideways here for a bit. A little tricky pullback uh, to to where though uh, where they did initiate that buying in the pre-market. Okay, and we start to rotate back up and uh, start to trade into higher liquidity up here, targeting 1580. Okay, objective achieved, uh, and then uh, uh, you know just understanding uh, that valuation by the larger players. All right, so 
those are a lot of examples we've gone through. Uh, a bit over my time frame here. We're going to go through just a few more examples and then open it up to questions uh, and answers here. Okay, some examples from some bookmap traders. Okay, here's a trader who's looking at the SPY. Uh, and uh, starts to note that uh, price starts to go down here uh, in SPY. Okay, well, uh, he, he's uh, looking at correlations uh, and looking at the VIX. Okay, and uh, he's starting to note that... Um, uh, that price actually uh, uh, in the VIX is also going down. Well, something's amiss here, right? This is your, your volatility index. Uh, and uh, wall of he notices this wall of liquidity here around uh, 47, uh, 15 or so. And, uh, and price has moved down, okay? But uh, the SPY has also moved down. Something's wrong here, okay? So um, uh, he, uh, he notes this uh, and... Um, uh, jumps in and uh, uh, buys a, uh, a an option here uh, in the S and P E mini. Okay, here it is at 2:55 p.m. Uh, he he just buys one uh, at 13:25. Okay, let's move on. Price starts to rotate back up. He's capturing that uh, that uh, dis, uh, disparity in the correlation back up to the top of the range here, uh, and um, uh, that's where he uh, looks over at Bookmap and the volatility index. Uh, it has dropped down now uh, into another area of liquidity, as we can see here, right? So uh, at this point here, uh, down next to the swing down here as well, uh, he uh, he's willing to cover, okay? So he fills just a six-minute trade, that's it, uh, makes a, a buck 75 out of it, $175 for one option, uh, and, uh, it, and covers, okay? So starting to understand... Uh, you know, um, correlated markets uh, and uh, discrepancies in prices. Okay. Here's another trader here uh, looking at VTVT. Okay, uh, it's uh, basically a penny stock looking at a dollar. He's looking at the dollar fifty area here. He sees that price has gone through that dollar fifty area on a strong auction to the upside. Okay, so uh, you got your psychological number, right? And then look at the bid here. They've, they've flipped or they are showing quite a bit of uh, um, liquidity here, uh, you know, 29,000 uh, shares. Uh, we, uh, we rotate back down into these areas here. We do not trade through it. He's starting to note the, uh, the way that uh, 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 price is, and this is at the open too. Uh, this is 940, this between 940 and 945. Uh, and um, uh, we're, we're seeing that uh, they're starting to even bid up in front of uh, the 150 area here. Okay. So uh, looking for an entry, it, we're making higher highs as well, uh, waiting to just, just for the buyers to step in here uh, to um, uh, 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 shift the, uh, the auction to the upside and, and uh, lift that offer, okay? Because we have a lot of strong support here, right? And they're starting to even front run each other, okay? You can see from 29,000 here to uh, uh, basically about uh, 27,000 here, okay? Uh, even one, even a little bit more, one, one uh, at uh, at 53 here. Okay, so putting all those pieces together, uh, notes notes the uh, uh, spike in volume at this area here in the buy side, looking for a, a pullback to where it broke from, uh, and looking for that continuation to the upside and bouncing off that support. All right, so uh, those are the examples I have for you. Uh, showing that competitive advantage by being able to see all of the liquidity, all of the traders, full depth of market, uh, start to target those areas, see how uh, the context of the uh, aggressive buying and selling within those areas of liquidity, okay? Reading the order flow uh, in the micro and the macro structures, okay? Reading some of that algorithmic behavior as well and clearly seeing the larger players uh, and uh, uh, their willingness to stay in the market at some of those areas. And then we looked at those examples of traders. All right, there we go. Uh, and then they'll end up here with this uh, slide again of Apple looking at a lot of different things that we started off with. Now, starting to understand some of these areas, here's our 930 open is right around here. Okay, well, we're looking for, I'm looking for high liquidity up here to trade. Okay, we, uh, we rotate back down to the swing down here in the uh, pre-market. Uh, and then um, basically uh, don't don't find any any traders. We start to find buyers instead. Come back up to the open, 
instead of uh, reaching this area up here around uh, uh, 176.50, they start to uh, front run here. Okay, so at this point, the situation is different. Okay, we we trade in that area, but we do, we just don't have enough buyers to uh, 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 trade through uh, that area. So uh, looking for this to rotate back down to where higher liquidity here on the bid. And we go right to it. Okay, uh, we get a retest of it here, and we do get we do see some selling here, but we get no follow through to the downside. Okay, so we're looking for uh, after this retest here. And we're not finding uh, enough sellers uh, to rotate lower. Well, we're going to find buyers. See a nice cluster of buying up here, looking for it to return to where it dropped from up here. And then we start to note high liquidity starting to come back in. Okay. You're going to see this again and again uh, in uh, in Bookmap. Uh, and uh, now this is where it gets really interesting because we have that geopolitical event, okay, that tariff protection. Uh, and uh, someone actually it looks like someone knew something here. Uh, because you can see that uh, uh, getting very aggressive on the uh, on the offer, okay, and then uh, uh, they are they are pulling, uh, but uh, you know they're jumping in in and out here, uh, and then finally uh, we we see the uh, uh, them, them all pull at the same time here, uh, and then uh, we fall through here. We get the uh, the sellers big transaction is selling at 175, and we see the flip. Okay, uh, as we start to come down, they flip from uh, that 175 on the bid to the offer back down into uh, 174. And then this is after the market close here uh, at, uh, at four. Look at them layer in though uh, down here, okay? So uh, larger players starting to layer in 173.90, 80, and 70, okay? So uh, uh, after market, you know, this is starting to give us a lot of insight here that uh, maybe this has been um, uh, uh, pushed to the downside uh, uh, too far. Okay, uh, willing to snap it up some of these areas. All right, so let's let's move on. Questions and answers. Uh, anything you want to know about Bookmap, uh, about this DX feed, uh, any of the advantages I've gone through, uh, happy to help you here. Uh, I'll, I'll show you here in just a minute um, uh, how we can, uh, uh, how you guys can get this new uh, DX feed uh, with the um, uh, a consolidated view with NASDAQ Total View and Edge X. Uh, and get uh, a, a lot more um, uh, liquidity uh, and uh, uh, understanding of uh, what the what the larger players are doing with that consolidated feed. Okay, any questions? And uh, let me uh, show you uh, where we can. Uh, I can point you to some of the questions here. Uh, you probably came to this landing page uh, to register for the webinar. Uh, with a small video here as well. Uh, there's the Q&A section down here, okay, which goes over the costs and how to purchase, uh, subscribe to the feed, etc. cetera. All right, so uh, here are the costs, uh, and uh, I'll show this as well in just a minute here. But uh, uh, your NASDAQ total view, you're probably paying uh, uh, $69 a month. Uh, you can get EdgeX, one or the other here. Okay, 69 for the NASDAQ total view, EdgeX, which is um, CBOE and BATS here, uh, for $59 a month. And okay, these are for non-pro. Here's your pro price. And then uh, the the, uh, the bundle, okay? So you can get them both together. Now, this is a, um, a, an offering here uh, for the uh, for the first month, okay? First month only um, is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Um, this is after the first month. It'll be, uh, the combination price will be, 119. Okay, so uh, that's some of the pricing here. We can go over more uh, questions that you have. Uh, feel free to ask. The um, I want to show you here uh, how you can get Bookmap and in, in, in the, the the process that you go through uh, for this DX feed Bookmap. Okay, so um, uh, first, what you'll do for step one is uh, go to Bookmap.com and you're going to need Bookmap 7. Okay, that's a beta version, the latest build. Uh, and the, the version you need, though, uh, just, you know, click on the packages up here. Uh, you need Global or Global Plus. These are the two different versions. Now, you can subscribe yearly or monthly. Uh, but uh, select that uh, and start to go through the process. So after purchase, log back into Bookmap. This is step two. Okay, log back into Bookmap and then click on this, this uh, link here, uh, add-ons. Okay, so once you do that, you go to the, the third and final step here. Uh, is uh, choose your, your the package that you want. 
Okay, so here's the uh, updated uh, pricing. Uh, you can see that um, you have um, uh, NASDAQ uh, depth here for 69. You can choose that if you like, uh, or you can choose uh, EdgeX if you like for $59 a month, or you can choose the bundle here uh, for um, uh, both of them together, $59 for the first month, and then the uh, uh, second month onward, uh, $119. Okay. All right, let's open it up here. Dell, you have a question. Uh, do we offer historical data for NASDAQ, total view, EdgeX? Yes, we do. Uh, you get up to 24 hours of uh, historical data. Okay. And um, uh, yeah, see, it, 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 it says here that um, uh, includes 24 hours of um you can see it here in the in the listing, okay. All right, yeah, part of the package. Uh, Turner is the uh, broker integration with TD Ameritrade on the roadmap. Uh, that's a good question. Um, we definitely want to go that direction. Uh, I I don't know. I'd have to get back to you on that. Okay. Uh, Currently, the way that uh, you can trade using um, uh, the comp any of these combinations here, NASDAQ, Total View, EdgeX, or the combo together, uh, it, it's going to go through DX feed uh, into, into uh, interactive brokers. And that's the way it's done right now. Okay, uh, Davide, you missed the first part. It's no, no problem about that. Um, you can, uh, it's all recorded here. Uh, and uh, I'll follow up with an email with everybody. Uh, and send the uh, uh, link as well. Okay. All right, any other questions? Uh, any plans to add OTC markets? Um, no, not at the moment. Uh, you know, looking at uh, uh, just U.S. equities at the moment. Okay, so if uh, if it's available uh, as a U.S. equity uh, traded um, uh, on the exchanges, then um, uh, then it, it should be available here uh, with um, uh, DX feed. All right, uh, let's see, Zoran, um, is it possible to trade to watch two or more Windows shares of the same thing? Um, no, uh, it's not. It's um, uh, one chart uh, uh, per viewing, but, uh, you know, you can zoom in and out very, very quickly. In fact, uh, yeah, I, I can demo that for you if you like, but uh, uh, zooming in and out is uh, is, is very quick uh, in, in book map. Um, Oh, you're welcome, uh, Davide. Um, yeah, yeah, that's great to hear that you, you're enjoying the uh, uh, the new feed, that new uh, uh, consolidated uh, data feed. Yeah. Yeah, new new feeds will be uh, added in the future. Okay, uh, and um, uh, you, you know, lo looking looking to uh, extend this, obviously. Uh, you know, we've, um, uh, we're growing into this, uh, into this market and, uh, you know, I just need to explain a little bit about the, uh, you know, equities, uh, and the book, uh, in equities compared to futures, uh, or, uh, digital currencies. I mean, it's just a much more complex book. There are many more liquidity providers. Okay. There are dark pools. Uh, there's a, a lot going on. Uh, and, um, uh, whereas if, if you're trading futures, uh, you're looking at very much, uh, um, you know, a, a centralized limit order book. Okay. Uh, all, all taking place at the CME or wherever the instrument is trading. Okay. CBOT or whatever it might be. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, a little more complex or a lot more complex with, um, uh, the equities, uh, and all the different data providers. Okay. So, uh, you're getting, um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll continue to uh, to grow into this field here. 
can they, the historical data recording sessions be saved to external drives? Um, well, no, I don't, I don't think so. Um, uh, Turner, I, I, I believe it's all, it will be recorded on the local drive in the feeds folder. But uh, once it's recorded, you can move it to any other feed and you can always add it uh, or any other folder. And then you can always add it from that other folder, no problem. Okay, but uh, recording it, I believe, has to be recorded locally. Okay. Uh, well, it might be possible to... Um, uh, Yeah, I mean, if you have some sort of a, a Turner, if you're talking about uh, maybe some uh, uh, quant features, uh, something like that, we can work with you uh, to uh, uh, maybe provide some other kind of solution that you're looking for. Okay, so just uh, reach out to me, uh, bruce at bookmap.com. All right. Okay, yeah, you're welcome, Turner. Um, yeah, we, we, we um, uh, you know, work with uh, several quants. So, uh, you know, happy, happy to work with you guys uh, and find uh, custom solutions for you. Okay, I know you have custom indicators. Um, you, you're looking at custom uh, data feeds and timeframes, et cetera, okay, data sets. All right, well, anyway, uh, all right, if there's uh, no more questions, we'll just go for a couple more minutes and uh, just uh, review here just a bit. Uh, how to get this again, uh, just uh, go to bookmap.com. Uh, you're going to need the bookmap 7 global or global plus version. So under packages here, uh, here, the, here they are. Uh, select those, uh, go through the, uh, the payment process, the log back into bookmap.com and then click on add-ons here. Okay? And that's where you'll finally just add the, uh, the data uh, package that you want here uh, for DX feed. Okay, NASDAQ total view, edge X or both. Okay. All right, and uh, let's see all the advan all the uh, different um, uh, examples here. See, I guess we're we're pretty pretty clear for you guys. Okay. Uh, yeah, and the um, uh, if you came in late, uh, the uh, one one uh, distinction here uh, with that. Um, a consolidated feed, you do you do get a discount. So let's go to the end here, just a second. Okay, and uh, you can see here for the for the first month, fifty nine dollars. Okay, so uh, nice uh, nice uh, uh, a discount that you're getting here, uh, and then uh, following month, though, it's going to be one nineteen. Okay. Okay. Let's see if the data source includes other accounts. That utilize anywhere uh, in Bookmap. I'm not sure exactly what you mean, Turner. Um, the actual order counts. Okay. Um, Yeah, then the number of orders um, at the, at the given price level. Uh, yeah, I mean we have the number of shares, uh, and um, I'm going to have to get back to you on that about the actual number of orders. Uh, we are working on that, uh, so um, uh, uh, I don't have any details on that at the moment. All right. So again, uh, happy to answer that. Just uh, Bruce at Bookmap.com. Uh, hi John. Uh, so you came in late. Uh, is the data feed require? What is the data feed requirement? Yeah, I was just going through that. Um, so um, uh, here it is again. How, how to get this? So uh, uh, DX feed book map. Book map seven is what you need. The latest uh, build, and uh, you're looking for the global or the global plus version. Uh, that's what you'll need. And then uh, for you, John, since you're already a member, uh, you'll just log into bookmap.com, uh, and then um, uh, this is step two anyway. Uh, and then uh, click on add-ons here, okay? And then uh, then you'll you'll choose what um, uh, feed you want here for for DX feed. 
you either want the NASDAQ uh, total depth here uh, or edge X uh, or the uh, combo package here, which is a consolidated feed of both of them. Okay. Uh, NASDAQ and edge X $59 for the first, first month. And then a one nineteen uh, the second and following months. Okay. All right, guys. Well, uh, I think that's it. We've been uh, we've gone for about an hour here. I uh, really appreciate uh, you guys coming. Uh, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. And we're, we'll do more of these as well uh, and find more examples. Uh, just um, as a note, I mean, uh, you know, the clarity here uh, is, is something really to uh, uh, recognize uh, with the with the U.S. equities. These larger players they really stick out uh, in these areas, like a sore thumb. Uh, and uh, the aggressor here, we see them pushing toward those areas of high liquidity. Okay, it's just where the market trades. It's it's they need that liquidity and they they trade toward it. Okay, so you can really start to map out your day here um, uh, by this um, advantage uh, of seeing it in the book. Uh, you know, several dollars away, uh, but it's all live. Okay, and that's uh, that's one of the big distinctions here that uh, uh, you get in that advantage. Uh, with with bookmap dx feed okay all right guys well thanks for coming uh we'll do more of these in the future and uh reach out with any questions uh, uh and uh yeah have a good day we'll uh we'll see you next time all right yeah thanks guys yeah take care bye bye